if you're like me and you pre-ordered the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II, uh, mine came in today and I have some accessories that I want to talk to you guys about. But first, let's do an unboxing and first initial impressions of this camera. And I don't know why it came in a bigger box than uh, necessary, but uh, thankfully, you know what I'm saying, the box doesn't look damaged or anything like that. So we might be in luck. Just letting you guys know, I am paying monthly for this camera. I'm doing the Affirm thing through the Sony's website so I can get that warranty as well as not getting the kit lens. I just got the body because I do own the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I, which you're seeing right now. I also own the Sony ZV-1 Mark I for my top down. So it's just a point and shoot version. And I also use a Sony Alpha 6100 as my webcam for streaming over on Kick. But with that being said, I didn't need the kit lens, even though yes, it's upgraded and everything like that. But I have lenses that are already perfect and I wanted to save a little bit of money. Yes, it's arguably like a little bit of money, but in the grand scheme of things, I'm probably never gonna use the kit lens. Um, so I'm gonna save money wherever I can because again, I'm a budget content creator. I'm not approaching this from doing, you know, documentaries, shooting gym videos, advertisements, all that stuff where a lot of camera people who cover this camera are coming from. I'm coming from the point of view of somebody who saved up money or is doing a monthly payment like I am, who's just an average person who wants to get into content creation. They look at the cameras that are out there. They happen to pick up the Sony ZV-1, Mark I or Mark II, and they're like, okay, now I got this stuff. What are some accessories? What are some things that I need? To get this camera up and running for my youtube channel well again got those recommendations for you so unboxing the sony zv e10 mark ii i did notice that the mark ii is a little bit lighter it feels like in the hand or whatever with no battery no attachments anything like that no camera cage anything like that attached i did notice that the grip is obviously more pronounced that's a lot of things that people have said and they really like about the camera um, unfortunately, the battery was straight out the box obviously does not have a charge, so I wasn't gonna be able to test it. And I'm not gonna be able to turn it on until Amazon decides to give me the actual uh, dummy battery that was supposed to come in before this camera. So yay, that was great. Um, so I'm not sure when I'm gonna be up and running with that. And that's gonna be a number one accessory, especially if you're indoors or you have access to some kind of plug. Um, you're gonna want to have a dummy battery. So definitely make sure that you check that out. I would also have a suggestion for the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. Um, it does come with one battery and you can get obviously more batteries, but there is a traveling rechargeable like case that you can fit the battery that comes in with the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II into that. And you can get it cheaply without batteries and you can find other batteries out there. Maybe you want to get another one that's Sony branded battery or something like that, but that charging case will work with any of these batteries that are for the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. And it's a traveling case or wherever that recharges them, displays information or wherever digitally and everything. I probably will end up picking that up in the future just for personal use. Your results may vary with that product because I haven't had the time to test it or anything like that, but it's definitely something that I'm having on my wish list. With that being said, the color distinction or wherever between the two, you can distinctly tell that the body of the camera is a little bit speckled and it has a little bit more of a grayish tone to it than the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I. Um, but overall, I really do like it. I like the fact that the SD card was moved to the side of the camera and is no longer on the bottom with the battery. And I don't think they could have done it, especially switching batteries. But again, I'm just glad that it's there because it is a hassle for the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I, the Sony ZV-1, and the Sony Alpha 6100 that I have. All of them have that or oh, get the SD card out of the battery, especially when you're using dummy batteries and all that stuff. Trying to fiddle around and press it and get it to slide out and all that stuff is kind of annoying. So I do want to talk about briefly the ports on the side of the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. Um, the other doors to open, not the SD card, but the other two ones to get access to the USB port and the microphone port, headphone port, HDMI port, all that stuff. Um, I'm not a fan of these latching mechanisms or whatever to fully close because I never feel like on any product that's had these that they fully close. So I'm worried about over time, the, I would say the legitimacy of, are those going to start failing and stuff? I'm not sure. I am glad that we have these little um, harnesses or whatever and no tassels like we've seen with the Sony Alpha 6100. I hate those things. So I'm glad those are staying, but um, like I said, those doors, I'm just kind of a little worried about, but I'm glad 
you know that they're there i'm glad that the the s and key q and the movie and picture modes or wherever it's like a little you know toggle that you s cycle through doing that or wherever i do like that more than like a button to switch modes and stuff like the sony alpha uh, the, the sony zv1 mark one has um i do like that they move the power on and off switch wherever to the top because it makes it a little bit easier if you have a field monitor or something on top of the actual i would say camera and on the sony zve 10 mark one i when i put field monitors or anything on top of the camera and i need to switch or flick that switch wherever to turn the camera on it can be a little bit annoying trying to fit your finger in there especially when you have a cage on and all that stuff so again it's a welcome change there and hopefully you know soon companies can come out with cages for it because i obviously want to put a cage on the camera and i would suggest you do so other than that everything else feels the same and it looks pretty good or wherever the camera i'm just Super excited to use this thing, to be honest. Let's move on to accessories. So future editing squid here. I forgot to mention a super important accessory for the Sony ZV E10 Mark II, as well as any of the Sony ZV line. And that is the Ulanzi fan to go on the back of your camera to make it cool off when you're shooting in 4K 30 or 60 or whatever that you're doing on any of the, you know, the Sony ZV line. Um, there are some other camera cages, I think for the, at least the the full frame version of the Sony ZV line um, that has a built-in fan and possibly like other cages that are going to be built with built-in fans. But the upgraded version, this is the first version of the Lonzi fan or wherever that had the little suction cups. It was terrible, but you could just put a rubber band around it or whatever to keep it sticked on the back of the, front of the camera. But I have the upgraded version on the back of the Sony ZV E10 uh, Mark One, and I'm probably going to get another one. They're like 30, 40 bucks or something but it's going to save you a lot, especially if you work in a in home environment and maybe your room gets above 80 degrees or wherever, at least to me, when I get around 85 to 90 degrees, depending on how much work I'm doing in here, you know, I have a PC going to have studio lights and all that stuff like that. And obviously I can't turn the AC down because I have a wife and son at home on the outside that's going to be freezing and I'm going to be sitting here chilling. Um, and obviously with the heat wave and all that stuff that's been going on, at least in the States, it's going to be very very important to have the fan on the back of your actual camera and i've never had an issue with these fans or wherever ever since i started bo using both of them they've just been great it's just that the older model you might be able to find it cheap i don't know if they phased it out but it's going to fall off the back of your camera just keep that in mind so to save yourself a headache get the upgraded version of it it will be linked in the description in the amazon affiliate store page front thing as well as making sure that you get it for any of your Sony ZV line of cameras because the overheating issue can be very, very uh, annoying to deal with, especially if you're recording a video. And if you don't write scripts and you like to talk for long periods of time, it's, it's gonna be a lifesaver, trust me. So again, I want to go ahead and reiterate that there will be a product review playlist at the end of the video covering some of these products I have done in the past as well as sometimes I've done a general overview of some products. So definitely check that out if any of these things catches your eye. With that being said, we're gonna talk about budget lenses. I'm gonna recommend the Yongnu 16 millimeter lens and their 11 millimeter lens. Both can be found on Amazon for under $300. And the Yongnu 16 millimeter lens in particular has been around like $230 as far as the lowest of the prices that you could find this at. And what I've done is use this for my webcam. And again, my webcam is the Alpha 6100 from Sony. And what I've done is just slap this on and I've recently picked up this newer ND and CPL filter. And I've it comes in a carrying case and it has this uh, magnetic black diffusion on top of it that you can take off and put on if you want to and what that does is the black diffusion just adds a little bit of a glowiness effect or wherever and since it's one fourth or wherever it's not too strong obviously you can go with a, a one and a half or even more to, to intensify that glow effect but what you essentially get is sunglasses for your lens and what that means is if you want to keep your aperture for this at least is 1.8 the sigma lenses and other lenses out there might be lower like the sigma 16 millimeter that i use for my talking head videos that you saw earlier that one is at a 1.4 this one's at 1.8 but if you want to keep that aperture or keep that bokeh or blurry background and you don't want to up your shutter speed or wherever you want to keep it like one over 50 or something like that you can put this nd filter on top of your lens and that will allow you to keep everything you know set and if your shot is a little bit overexposed 
just putting this on and leaving it at ND2 and not, you know, cranking up the actual uh, slider or wherever to keep it that way, I find that it keeps my stuff, you know, infinitely exposed, especially if I'm shooting in HLG3 on the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I. So again, there's two different varying uh, sets that I personally have. The one that's here or wherever, I got for like $77, at least at the time of recording. Usually this comes with an actual case, this right here, and you put all the different stuff or wherever inside the different slots inside the case. And the thing about it is, is that this is over, usually over a hundred and something dollars, but you can see you have different slots and stuff in there. The one that comes on the Sigma lens, however, just comes with this. And it's just a ND filter with the one fourth black diffusion built in. And obviously, you know, you just, when you take it off, you put it in here and then you close it and you put it in your camera bag. So it just depends on if you need that CPL filter, pretty much that allows you to see through water more clearly and like through glass more clearly, like maybe if you're filming from outside of a car into, into a car at a person or something like that, the CPL filter will help you with that. And that's why it's a little bit more expensive, plus that magnetics and then having a traveling case. But again, at least at the time of recording, you can get it cheaper than this. This one would just, you know, the one fourth diffusion and the ND filter is going to be probably more, I would say, comparable for people who are sitting in the studio like I am with lights and stuff like that and shooting at a profile that might be need to be a little bit more overexposed, but they don't want to change any camera settings. This is going to allow you to do that, but this is at $80 and this one again was at $77. So it just depends on what's on sale and what's available. I just went, the, went with the company newer. And obviously you got varying uh, thread sizes and filter sizes and you can find your your filter sizes usually on either the sides of the camera or you can probably see right here it says 58 or wherever that little symbol and stuff that just tells you the filter size of the actual lens and newer has you know various uh, filter sizes as well as there's other companies out there that has their own you know thread mounts or wherever for these filters that you can you know fit on top of your lens on top of your camera another lens that i recommend other than the sigma 16 millimeter and the young new one is the sigma 30 millimeter this is what i use i got this one personally from keh i'm not affiliated with them not sponsored by them or anything but it's a used camera website that sells cameras and lenses um that are obviously used and thoroughly checked and you can you can expect to get really good quality uh gear from them you can use a firm or whatever to pay monthly for the cameras or lenses or you can just buy them outright and like i said i've never been disappointed with getting anything from them and like i said it's just been a joy to you know purchase from the company but like i said 30 millimeter lens i use this for product photography as well as getting close-ups on smaller products or wherever when i do b-roll on a camera slider or something like that most people will use this for uh, portrait photography but i don't do anything like that yet but it just every now and then i would use this lens i'm going to talk briefly about this slider i was going to recommend this one but now i will no longer because it's coming in at like almost 400 dollars, and this slider is not worth it i picked this up for 163 dollars and the lowest it's been or wherever at least this year is 179 or something like that um and i've picked this up in december of 2023 like i said for 163 dollars and right now it's like 389 and it's not worth it because for one it doesn't come with a ball head it doesn't come with an, a way to pan or tilt or anything like that and i think the reason why they jacked the price up is because this camera as well as other cameras from other companies has come out and they're trying to take people's money so I was going to recommend this because it's small, it's compact. It obviously can fit in a camera bag really, really well. It is kind of heavy, but it does a decent job uh, for what it's you know capable of. But again, I would only get it if it's around $163 or less. I would not get it for the action price right now. I'll have the slider that I also use, which is the newer slider. It's big and it comes in like three different sizes, but it's big. It's not gonna be able to fit in a camera bag. It's gonna have its own carrying case and all that stuff. It does have app control. It does have a separate remote that you can buy to sync up with the motor and everything. But I do enjoy using it. Just keep in mind that the smaller that you get as far as motorized and like the more stuff that you're gonna have to buy and all that stuff, you might, be better off just hand holding this and using that as to capture your footage because there are some hand holding techniques to get a good gimbal like or motorized slider like footage just by hand holding so it's up to you but again if you're going to get a camera slider and you're just sticking in your studio and stuff i know it might be big but it's better off getting one of the ones that has 
that at least the panning motion or wherever because at this price point you can get a decent one like the newer one for like 200 and something not even near 400. this is just absolutely insane to me that they're charging that with the newest slider it does come with a ball head and like i said having that pan and tilt uh you know capability or the panning capability doesn't have the tilt but obviously you can tilt the ball head or wherever and get different shots and i just i just like it i just love it and you're gonna want to get the actual um stabilizers for that uh, camera slider it's a separate purchase but you are going to want to get that and attach it to your tripod's base of your legs and stuff like that i'll have all that linked in the amazon storefront or whatever down below we're going to talk about the field world monitor right here this one is a really good monitor in my personal opinion for the price yes it's on the smaller end but if you can't see your screen because you have you know these doors open and you have stuff coming off or wherever this screen is going to be a little bit bigger and it's going to be able to sit on top of your camera and obviously give you a better picture or wherever in my personal opinion it's not too too bright even with the little shade that comes with it outside but if you're inside it's going to be plenty bright in my personal opinion and use and on top of that it has this usb port to be able to upload luts and i know the camera of the sony zv e10 mark ii can upload luts but you know if for some reason the LUTs are not available to upload on the camera you can still upload it on here and get the same look that you're going for and it also has histograms and all this stuff i haven't seen a way to turn on zebras so i don't think it has zebras but false colors histograms all that stuff is available on it and like i said you can upload a ridiculous amount of different uh LUTs to it and it doesn't come with a dc out but it does come with a battery that has uh a actual usb type c charging port so what i've done is actually jerry rig the battery wherever to be like slightly off and it will power it and i'll just leave the usb type c plugged in or wherever charging while it's in use because i record for a long time i wouldn't recommend doing it that way but obviously that is a choice and it has a hdmi in and out so what you can do is just do it that way and then use something like this which is a usb capture card for hdmi signal this is like a nine dollar ten dollar usb capture card for hdmi it only goes up to 1080p 60. this is something that has been verified from epostbox who did a, a video years ago talking about what was available for usb to hdm or hdmi to usb capture cards and fact checked them and made sure that they were actually you know displaying 1080p 60 frames a second because a lot of them advertise it but they weren't doing that resolution and this is one of the ones that he recommended so i'll leave it linked in the description again i got that for like nine dollars or wherever so again you can do that and you can have you know your stuff going straight into your pc and like i said getting that 1080p 60 frames per second footage i know people will probably just say use the usb port to get 4k and all that stuff or wherever but in my experience like i said it, it's just easier and i'll have hdmi cables that i recommend down in the description which are thoroughly like braided and and tough and rugged and stuff like that and i've never had a problem with them and they have varying lengths or wherever so i just will highly recommend those next we're going to have this uh quick release plate for your camera or wherever i just have this one from newer because when i first got my cameras this was on sale for like 20 bucks and it had two of them or wherever a pack of two and obviously there's better ones out there from other companies and stuff there's ones that just button releases and everything and it's just easier i just happened to get these because like i said two of them were on sale and now i have four of them for the, just to keep the same ecosystem next we're going to talk about the irig pre 2 this just has an xlr input and obviously you can put this into your camera and then use rechargeable AA batteries and it supplies phantom power if your microphone needs it or not and you can use various same mics or wherever like the samsung audio c2 or wherever that i use for the longest time for my talking head videos and stuff but he's been out for years you can get pencil condenser microphones from any company or something like that um that probably gonna be vastly superior to this but since it was under like a hundred dollars at the time of getting it I still kind of recommend it because the audio is still pretty good for how old that thing is but also you can get a fine fine dynamic microphone which are cheap uh dynamic microphones and hook it up to the iRe pre 2 and just eq the audio in post because like i said it has you know the xlr port to go into you know your camera what i did to replace this c2 wherever was actually get the comica vm30 as well as the cinco mic d1 but I do like the Comica VM30 a little bit more because it has its own wireless receiver. And if I talk into the microphone, you can see the levels going up and down and everything because it's wireless and it has different connections and 
you know, audio changes and, and just, just, it's just a very, very good overhead shotgun microphone, or even if you just want it in a shot and you have it close to your mic, uh, to your mouth, it's a very, very good audio quality. And I purchased this with my own money and did a review on it. And that's how I was able to start working with Comico on a lot of things. But like I said, this one for entry level, it comes in at around a, like $180. This is going to be a really good setup and this is what i would highly recommend for this kind of overhead you know shotgun microphone i would recommend it over everything or wherever on this table other than the yanmu lens or the sony zv e10 mark ii if you do need a wireless lavalier system and you're looking for something on a budget you can go with this godox one um i've done a review on it and it comes with three different microphones, one microphone on the receiver itself and two different microphones or whatever to, you know, attach to your person. It doesn't come with the option of putting a, a I would say, lapel mic on it. But it, again, it does have those three unique uh, options where for microphones, as well as being able to connect this directly into the intelligent hot shoe on your microphone. So it's all EQ'd and keeps your audio levels leveled. If you need something that's a little bit more expensive, you can get a you know, a separate lapel mic, cause that's what you'll have to do for the system. But this is coming from Comica. This is something that they sent out for a review. And this has four microphones to hook up to one receiver. And like I said, it doesn't come with a lapel mic, but the audio quality out of this is really, really good. And obviously if you're micing up multiple people, this is gonna be good for you, but this is like 240. So, you know, your results may vary if you need it or wherever, but it's a really, really good audio system. Other than that, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, other than maybe a actual, dummy battery that I'll have linked in the description. So if you're interested in the future to see what other products and accessories that I recommend for use with the Sony ZV E10 Mark II that I use with the Sony ZV E10 Mark I, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on bell notifications so you know when those videos go live. If you are interested in any of the products that I recommended or wherever, and you're wondering if I did a review on it, don't forget to check that product review playlist at the end of the video. And if you want to support me directly, then you can consider becoming a member of the channel. Those are finally turned on. And I'm super glad that, you know, y'all helped me reach that milestone. With that being said, check out the live stream link down in the description if you want to come and talk to me about any of these gear recommendations live or see video game gameplay over on Kick. And again, Amazon affiliate links to the storefront page down in the description it helps me out at no cost to you. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. I can't wait to, you know, finally set up this camera and get it up and running. And hopefully my dummy battery comes in pretty soon so I can, uh, you know, go ahead and do that. With that being said, this is going to be awesome. And hopefully you guys enjoy your Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. Let me know your thoughts of your use case scenario of this camera or if you purchase it yourself and your own thoughts of the camera down in, in the comment section down below. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Y'all take care. Have a squid day. God bless you and yours. And deuces, everybody. Much love.